Uh, hello, internet, and welcome back to the story nook. Today, we are going to be reading... I'd rather have a cat than a harem reincarnated into the world of an otome game as a cat-loving villainess. Look at that cat. That cat looks adorably villainous. And this guy with his bird. It is written by author Kaz Kazuzu Kobatu. And the artist is Hinan no Chano. I'm probably mispronouncing all of that. And for the people that I am misspelling your names, I am so, so sorry. But um, here we go. Here's our cute little villainous girl, her cat she adores. I have no idea who this guy and his owl is, but it's giving Harry Potter fucking vibes. Also, this owl has anime eyes. But here's another character page. Let's just automatic zoom. Look at them. So we have. Oh, owl boy, these must be her brothers. Because, like, you have a woman here who's also blonde. These guys are blonde. She has black hair from her father. The mother definitely has gold eyes. And I guess the father has gray eyes of some sort. I don't know. It's not that big. We got one kitty, two kitties, three kitty, four. We got a really big cat and little itty bitty kitties. Awesome. Oh, no. Five and six. Seven and eight. Uh, nine and ten. Ten cats. I counted ten cats. How many cats did y'all count? Let me know. Alright, this is copyright stuff. This is who it's translated by. Blah, blah, blah. That's the character page. And now we are on the prologue. I like that a lot of these uh, start with a prologue. I personally don't, uh, when I write, I don't write things as prologues. I'm just like, chapter one, this is where we're starting, bitches, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, prologue, remembering the past. Life can be rather unpredictable. Some days are inexplicably wonderful, while others are completely unremarkable. On this particular day, Amy, the daughter of the Earl of Northland, was having a very off day. My husband's calling me. Hold on while I figure out if I can pause this recording icon. That was my husband calling me to tell me he's off work. So, let's continue forward. Let's figure out where I was. On this particular day, Amy, the daughter of the Earl of Northland, was having a very off day. It all started when she woke up feeling rather disoriented. Amy had a hunch it had something to do with a dream that roused her around daybreak. But when she tried to remember the details, it was as if they were obscured by a thick layer of fog. That murkiness was the only thing she could discern. At breakfast, Amy accidentally burned her tongue on tea, and later, despite searching far and wide, she could not find the handkerchief she had worked so hard on embroidery, embroidering for a homework assignment. It was later discovered that the handkerchief had been accidentally put in her brother's luggage, which he had taken back to his dormitory at school. But Amy was gently scolded by her governess all the same. As if that wasn't enough, Amy's least favorite dish, liver pate, was served for lunch. But the worst was yet to come that very evening. Amy's father, the Earl of Northland, served as the Director of Technology at the Institute of Magic, an organization under the direct control of the Royal Palace. His work involved developing magical tools. Every day he would come home late. After endless meetings, research experiments, and prototype tests, only rarely arriving before sunset. The Northlands, however, were a very close-knit family. So the Earl's return from work was typically a very welcome time of day. 
But on this day, Amy was summoned to his study instead of the living room. When she arrived, she saw her parents standing before her, her father frowning, her mother looking puzzled. Amy fidgeted, uncomfortable in this unusual, solemn atmosphere, and felt overcome with a terrible premonition. The Earl's gloomy silence persisted until he began to speak after several passing looks from his wife. The Earl told her he had received an announcement that Amy was selected as a candidate to become the third prince's fiancé. Damn. Your baby, like, do, do we know how old Amy is? No, we, we just know she was having an off day. Her embroidery wasn't going too well. And today, the third prince is just like, hey, you want to be my fiancé? And it's not even third prince, it's his family. The third prince's two older brothers have already been betrothed to noblewomen from neighboring kingdoms, he continued. So it appears that... To restore balance of political power in the royal family, the third prince must marry someone a little more local. But my dear, Amy is only ten years old. She's ten? Ten? No, we're, we're not engaging ten-year-old babies, please. Please. I know this happens all the time in these manga, in these light novels, in the, like, these old-school stories. The baby is ten. The baby is ten. No, I'm not cool. Did y'all see the picture that I showed you at the beginning? The baby is 10. I have complaints. If it's not obvious, I have complaints. The complaint being, the baby is 10 years old. She's too little to be engaged. How old is the third prince? I have complaints. Her mother interjected. I expressed that concern as well, but she falls within the age range they set forth, and they wouldn't budge an inch. There wasn't anything I can do. The third prince was 13 years old! Okay, so the third prince is three years older than Amy. I can work with a four-year age gap. Kinda, sorta. But I'm mad about it. It seemed that ladies as young as eight... As young as eight to as old as 18 years of age had been allowed to qualify as a candidate to become the prince's future bride. And that even the daughter of a marquise had joined their ranks. The royal palace is planning a tea party as we speak so the prince can meet the candidates in person. Well, at least he gets to meet the possible fiancé in person. Doesn't mean he gets to pick which one he wants. But I have complaints. I mean, even you are just like, ah, uh, I don't really want my daughter a part of this shit. The Earl reluctantly explained as he unveiled a portrait of Amy's potential tutor, Edward Leo Ludusia, the third prince of Ludusia. Amy gazed upon the princess, Prince Edward's dark blonde hair and bright silvery gray eyes. That's not the brothers in that picture, it's the boyfriend, possibly? Ah, I thought it was older brother. But no, possible love interest. At 13, the prince had still had a soft usefulness lingering in his facial features, but their elegance and symmetry were clear evidence of the handsome man he would one day become. The face was oddly familiar to Amy. But where had she seen it before? And when? Amy's attention was entirely drawn to the picture. Her father's voice seemed to gradually become distant. As Amy had not formally debuted in society yet, she had few friends, and everyone she had met were acquaintances of the family. Her older brother had sometimes brought over friends from school, ones he had bonded with over a shared passion of hunting magical beasts, but they had all been rather friendly and unpretentious. She never remembered any of them looking quite so intimidating or so royal. The third prince had not officially debuted yet either, so Amy couldn't have seen his portrait before in the society pages. Plus, Amy thought, it's not like there are any paparazzi here, so it's not as if I've seen any invasive candid photos of him flitting around. Wait, what's a paparazzi? Amy? 
As if she had been struck by lightning, a bright white light filled her vision and she fainted on the spot. Oh my god, look at these, like, little distinctive, like, right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but look at these cute, like, cat to, like, cat face and cat paws on either side to distinguish, hey, new section, new, new scene. I really like that. I also appreciate that they make use of these scenes. When Amy came to, she remembered. She remembered her previous life. Her life as an ordinary high school girl in Japan. Never in a million years had Amy ever expected she'd be reincarnated. What was she, some sort of heroine in a light novel? And now this is chapter one. And we're only like 10 minutes in, but we're going to end this here. And go back up here to look at the pretty cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. Y'all can look at this picture. But yeah, let me know what you thought of I'd rather have a cat than a harem. Um so yeah. Um tell me all the things you enjoyed. I hope you're all staying hydrated. Uh currently I don't have any work. I'm still waiting on background checks and callbacks for all the applications I put out and all that good stuff. So I do have an interview for my uh one of the local waffle houses in my area. About your day. Tell me about all the good stuff. If you want to commission me, I do uh art commissions on Kofi and Fiber. I also do voice acting uh, commissions. Most of my voice acting has been for not safe for work stuff, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, I mostly draw, as you can see by this background, lovely VTuber that seems to have broken itself yet again. I swear it breaks often. Uh, I mostly do Sonic art. I do mermaids, all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, consider commissioning me or donating so I can afford my bills because I am $200 short of my bills for the week until, uh, I hopefully get a new job. Yay, having some savings and a spouse that takes on half the bills. And we do have to move this month, which is a bitch. I should probably pull that tape out of storage. But I've also been suffering with depression. A lot of fucking depression. But here we are. I'm trying to be fucking productive today. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Tell me all about the good things. Also, thank you very much to my Patreon and Kofi supporters. If you are supporting me financially on Patreon, I have been uploading some Patreon exclusive videos, including like an animation I worked on and all that good stuff. So yeah, everyone stay healthy, stay happy, stay in good spirits, or at least attempt to. Also, cats. Cats are awesome. Bye!